outdoor wood boiler. Basically, um, big machine, 400, so three to 400 gallon water jacket, gets a fire going inside, pumps that hot water inside your house, and boom, there's your heat. Could be radiant baseboard, could be in-floor heating, could be um, forced hot air, could be old school um, cast radiators, whatever. Uh, either way, these machines do the same concept. They heat water and send it into the home. But question remains, what do you do when the power goes out? Um, well, you gotta get the power back on. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Now, before you go, because I'm sure you're pissed, um, these machines are generally on their own circuit, 40 amp circuit. Now, underneath this access panel, and I'll sh which I'll show you in a second, um, you can manually plug in your pump to a, an extension cord um, that will continue to circulate the water. But as far as damper operation and, and temp sensor, there's three, there's generally, in most wood burners, there's three components. You have a damper, air control, you have your pumps, and then you have your temperature, thermostat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so those are three things that need electricity. Well, your pump on your outdoor boiler is the only unit that you can actually physically pump into an extension cord. To get this machine fully operational, you need to have a generator that is powering that circuit. These are obviously tied into your circuit panel. This is, I believe, a 40 amp breaker. It's its own breaker, and that's another thing. Do not tie in anything else to your outdoor wood boiler electrical circuit. This is recommended right from Central Boiler. If you have a panel that's full and you maybe want to tie it in and take the easy way out, no. Expand your panel, add a sub panel. These outdoor wood boilers should be on their own circuit. You don't want to be running chop saws and power saws and electric heaters and whatever else, because if you trip that circuit, your machine is now cold. So this machine runs on its own circuit, 40 amp. Nothing else is drawing power from the unit. So let me show you guys the access panel here, um, which will show you the pump, which technically if you lost power, and you maybe you didn't have your house wired yet you could run a generator off to here and you can at least continue to circulate the water that would give you a fighting chance as far as not letting your water freeze but for the most part we had two generators tied right into the house um, we could run our whole house on our generator obviously not everything at once but that is a con with these units they do require electricity um I'm gonna do a new pro and con video. Sorry folks, the camera shot off there, but anyways, like I was saying, I'm gonna do a pro and con video. That is one of the cons of these machines is that they require electricity. Um, again, it's not the end of the world. Chances are you're gonna get some type of, if you have an outdoor boiler, chances are you're prepared enough and you either have solar or you have a generator or what have you. So anyways, let me show you the cover real quick, or the pump real so quick. So under the side access panel here, as you can see, these are all your temperature sensor wires and stuff like that. And then under this cover here, see this wiring loom, you have um, your damper, which operates your furnace. Currently ours is not running. It's just smoldering, so it's not calling for heat. But anyways, in a SHTF hits the fan situation, if, if you were to unplug this plug here and plug it into like say a generator, this would still operate your pump. This would still circulate um, the water. As far as telling what temperature your machine's at, you're kind of, um, what's it called here? You're kind of up SHITS Creek because you won't be able to tell. The only way to return power to the temp sensor and the damper here is obviously your panel is getting your generator up to speed. The only thing you can do separately, if you little had a Honda generator or something here, you can take this plug out and in theory plug it into the Honda generator and at least still circulate the water, which would give you, you know, however many hours fighting chance um, to get your main power back on. So let's wrap up. All right, folks, so let's just wrap up here. Like I said, um, if your power goes out on your outdoor wood boiler, uh, your damper is going to shut. Your machine is going to be non-producing, non-circulating. So again, you just need to make sure that you get your circuit breaker back up, get power to that. That is one of the essential um, parts of your panel. Um, you can shut off like extra rooms and stuff you don't need, but you need your furnace in your basement power to that you need power to the outdoor boiler and you need power to your fridges i have four circuits on my house excuse me five circuits on my house the outdoor boiler the furnace because they work hand in hand um, this hot water flows through our, our furnace and situ and whatnot so that still needs power to run um, which you know, is tied into our thermostat so the circuits you need to get power for is your outdoor boiler your furnace probably your fridges and um your main thermostats. We have two main thermostats in the house and then we have small um, 
we have small the mercury ones so um the powerless ones if you will well they still have power but that's basically what you do if you lose power with your outdoor boiler um if you have a outdoor boiler you need to make sure that you spend the time energy and effort and money to wire in a generator and whatnot solar backup on these i'm kind of looking into it'd be an interesting concept um haven't done it yet but i assure you if i do look into that um that would be interesting to see if you could get these units to run off a solar battery grid um uh, independent from the house now that would be pretty sweet but that's a theory for the future which i don't know if we'll ever do but that would be cool to uh, get into but anyways thank you guys for watching um appreciate it leave a thumbs up leave a comment um hopefully you took that advice remember if you're wiring your outdoor boiler make sure it's on its own circuit do not tie it into anything else um, because you don't want to risk blowing that circuit let's say you left an extension core outside and it got wet boom there goes your circuit your machine's dead so keep it on its own circuit um, and make sure you have a electrical backup to send power to this unit so yeah thanks for watching guys appreciate it let me know what you think leave a comment like i always say we will see you out in the woods